Welcome back to The Journey. In today's video, I'm going to talk about love. We all want love. We all like love. And so I'm going to talk about three simple ways we can show someone that we love them and actually build a really deep connection. I mean, we all, one of the things to recognize is love is a job. It requires work. It requires putting effort in. But these steps are simple. They don't require a lot of real heavy lifting. And that's what, there's that that is positive about it, but also these will have a profound inf impact, not only on your relationship, but if you have kids involved, wait till you see what happens. So let's get right to the three simple ways we can show someone that we love them. The first one is this. How do we normally greet people? Hey, how's it going? How are you doing? How was your day? And what do we all do? We all just blank out. Oh, fine. Good. Yeah. Right. There's absolutely no connection. It's just perfunctory. There's nothing inviting about that. Well, here's a great question. A great way to start every conversation with anyone you care about, whether it's a friend, it's a close coworker, or it's the person you love. Instead of asking, Hey, how you doing? Ask them, how's your heart? Look at that. Like, doesn't that just like, whoa, how's my heart? Wow, you want to know me. My goodness, let me think about that. How is my heart? Wow, that's just an invitation for vulnerability. It's an invitation for connection. Think, I mean, if you're, there's this, it used to be true that men were very closed off and shut down. But is, is the female changes, they're becoming much more shut down and closed off. And so it's really becoming more equal that both sides can struggle with being intimate and vulnerable. And so just think if you're one of those male or female who struggles, you know, gets the complaint that you don't open up enough. If you turn to your partner and you start saying to them, you walk in from work and you're like, Hey honey, how's your heart? Oh, isn't that what they've been looking for forever? How's my heart? My God, what a question. Wow, my heart's a little sad today. Yeah, I talked to Judy on the phone and there's some problems with her son. Or my heart's a little angry today. My boss changed the total process to how we do things. I'm really frustrated by that. Do you see how it just completely opens up the possibility for connection? So number one, stop giving those people close to you, that simple, hey, how you doing? Start asking them, how's your heart? It's just, wait do you see the connection that happens from that. Number two, and this would be more specifically, I mean, you can do this with friends. I, I used to do this with accountability partners. And early on in my process of recovery of learning how to open up and be vulnerable as part of a men's group. And we had a call list. And I'd check in every day with somebody from the group. And we always had a rule. We had to share three feelings um, or three things we liked about the other person. <clears throat> now, if you're in a relationship, imagine this picture and imagine you have kids. You're upstairs getting ready for your day. Your partner's downstairs making breakfast for the kids. And you scream out, hey, honey, I just love your eyes. And you know what else I love? I love how you get the kids ready for school each day. And you know what else I love about you? I love how absolutely brilliant you are. You come up with the greatest solutions to problems. You just blow me away. Now imagine the impact on your kids to hear you totally affirming and acknowledging the grace and beauty and excellence of your partner and them in turn, oh honey, you know what I love about you? I love how hard you work so that we can go on vacations. And I love how damn good you look in those jeans you wear. You know the ones I like, my favorite ones. And I just love your smile. It's so warm and tender. Imagine that, your kids growing up to seeing that every day. And I did this and this is what happens. All of a sudden, your kids start screaming out. They'll scream it out to their brother and sister. They'll scream it out to you. They start joining in. You want to raise kids that know how to share and express love? Kids, don't tell our kids how to do it. Live it. 
That's the mistake parents make. They tell their kids how to live. No, that's not how you parent. Live what you want your children to become. That's what they will become. So when you make a commitment to loving yourself and loving your partner, now they know how. All right. Now the third simple little tip is, I kind of let the cat out of the bag earlier. I screwed up, um, but it's sharing feelings. Sharing feelings with your partner. And usually this is best at the end of the day where you pick a time and you share one to three feelings from your day. And so that would look like, um, you know, I, I will kind of use those examples. You know, this morning when you were screaming out and said, I look great in my jeans, that felt really, I, I chose to feel really sexy in that moment. I chose to feel really happy in that moment. So in other words, you're expressing something from your day. And do you hear how I changed it? I didn't say you made me feel because nobody makes us feel anything. We choose our feelings. We get to decide if something is encouraging or discouraging. And that even goes for slander. Because if somebody slanders me and it's not true, I get to decide if I let it in. Somebody calls me at a blankety blank, I'm like, is that true? No. So why would I let it in? Or I might say, well, it's true, I've been that. I don't believe I have in this moment, um, but thanks for sharing. Like I'm, I get to control my internal boundary and what messaging comes in. I don't have to control you and tell you to speak to me a certain way because I'm responsible for how I feel about what you say. You don't control that, I do. And it goes for, and so that's why when we share our feelings, we don't say you made me feel, we say I chose to make myself feel. Because we could also say, well, the way you brought up about my genes, you, you used this word instead of that word, so I wasn't sure you were telling the truth. Completely same statement, but because of how we choose to interpret it, we'll flip it. Well, yeah, it was okay, but I really, you know, I've told you I like this word better. <laughs> There's the proof. We choose our feelings, okay? Now, here's one thing that can happen is maybe you've had a tough day, or maybe you and your partner are fighting, and I, 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 I recommend even when you're fighting, you share feelings. But in those moments when it's raw, it would be a bit different and say, look, I'm going to share my feelings tonight, um, but I'd like to ask that there be no feedback. So in other words, you're still investing in the relationship, but you're also honoring that right now you're going through a tough time and connection isn't possible because you're both working. You're both still blaming the other person for the problem. You haven't quite figured out inside yourself how you need to let that go and deal with yourself. So this is the best you can do right now. There's distance. Both of you recognize it. Um, and you're perfectly imperfect and it's okay. It takes time to collect ourselves and recognize, oh yeah, I'm the one who allowed that to freak me out. I'm responsible. That can be a process. And so that's why you set the boundary. And so when your partner shares their feeling from the day, you know, I'm really sad that we're so disconnected. Your response is, thank you for sharing. That's it. No feedback, nothing. It's on both sides. It's what's called a wall of pleasantness. But see, even in the midst of the deepest, darkest, most difficult times, we can make the choice to build connection and intimacy and keep the relationship alive and nurture it. Our cho it is a choice. If we get headstrong, I'm not, they're a blankety blank. I'm not doing none of that. Well, that's your choice. And you're going to reap the consequences of that. If you can live with the consequences of a disconnected relationship, then okay. But if you don't want a disconnected relationship, these are my suggestions. Now, there's another thing I want to add to this. Most relationships are codependent. And in most relationships, one is either the love addict or love avoidant. So the love addict, this is a piece of cake. They can spew 20 feelings they can have 700 compliments, but the love avoidance, blank, numb, because they're avoidant. They're, they're out of touch with reality. They're not present in their body and they're not present emotionally. They were suffocated as a child, stripped of emotion. And so it's very difficult for them. And so what can happen is the addict is, it's easy for them to do this. The avoidant, it's not. And so if you're the avoidant who has a difficult time expressing your emotions, then my encouragement to you is, 
seven day out of the seven days, four to five times you're the initiator. That teaches you to find comfort and safety that it is now, you're no longer a child, that your partner has your best interests in mind. They do want to support you. And all of that discomfort of feeling weak and whiny and spineless and, and um, mushy, you can work towards recognizing that view is immoderate, it's dysfunctional, it's immature, um, and you can move towards moderation and heal safely. Conversely, those who it's easy, don't judge them and don't keep count because you'll be, you'll be like, they've only done it four times, they were supposed to do it five. Let that go. Work on backing off, not paying so much attention to them, not being aware of how you're doing it better than they are. Like that's your recovery because when you're the love addict, you, your primary focus is them, not yourself. That's your perfect imperfection and dysfunction is you're always on their back noticing how imperfect they are and how they're not complete because the love addict expects positive regard and love at all times to a dysfunctional level. And so your recovery, that's why it's, you know, the, the avoidant initiates a bit more, the addict less, and they're working on the discomfort of initiation while they're working on the discomfort of not paying attention. And that's how both, you see all the benefits that are wrapped up in this. So once again, change the way you greet each other. Ask them how their heart is. Share three things you like or love about your partner every day and share three feelings from the day. Now, if you like my content, if you like this type of video, please share it. If you want more of it, please go to my new magazine. It's www.thegreatnessuniversity.com. Tons of free information. All my content goes there, things you can't find anywhere else that'll really help you on this journey. Um, leave me your comments. Let me know if you like that opening line. The whole, how would that make you feel if someone greeted you with, how's your heart today? Would that open you up and make you feel cared for and loved? And finally, if you think this can help somebody else, please share it. And as always, enjoy the journey.